Hi guys, uh, thank you very much for joining the second in our live webinar series. Um, we're just going to talk you through today about what we're going to be speaking about. Um, it's specifically about our internship program, but from an alumni's point of view. Um, the whole presentation will focus on uh, alumni previous participants that we've had on our program, where they've come from, um, who they are, and what they've gone on to do afterwards. And we're delighted to be joined today by two of our alumni, um, one of which is called Sylvia and the other is Faith um, and they will be talking about their experience and Faith will also be available for the question and answers at the end. So we're just going to start the PowerPoint presentation now, if you just bear with us. Okay, so you should be able to see the presentation now. Um, as you can see the title is Webinar, um, Alumni Reflecting on Their Internships in China. Um, so as I said, I'm going to introduce you to our two alumni um, just briefly at the beginning. They'll explain a bit about their programs in China and then there'll be some time at the end to ask Faith any questions you have and also us as well. Um, during the presentation itself, we will talk about the company, um, the company history, uh, how we first set up, um, what we do from the London office in addition to our programs on the ground in China some of our program participants, where they come from, what they're doing now, um, and a whole variety of events that we organize for our alumni as well. So if you do have any questions, there's the Q&A um, section at the side, so you just feel free to ask either throughout the presentation or at the end. Okay, so this is Sylvia. I'm going to pass you over to Sylvia to introduce herself and what she's been doing um, while she was out in China earlier this year. Okay. Um Hi guys, um, basically yeah, I'm Sylvia, I'm 23 and um, I studied chemical engineering so um, basically I decided to go to China because um, it was a lot in the news, there was a lot in the news about China up and coming, its economy and I thought why not so I went into Google and I typed in engineering internships in China and CRCC Asia came up so I decided to explore about the company and just read um, commentaries from other people who've been done internships out there and I saw good reports so I went on to apply and um, then I got called and I had a telephone interview and um, yeah lo and behold um, I was offered an internship in Shenzhen um, so I was working for a biopharmaceutical company in Shenzhen and it was really really good um, the company was just so warm everyone was so fascinated by us as well I think because you know we were foreign as well um, it was a really easy commute. I must say, the first day we um, caught the underground and then we had to catch the bus. And because the roads are quite wide, we didn't know which side to go to. And then eventually we caught the bus and then went to work. Um, but it was just really, really good. We got the hang of it really quickly. It's, it's just so easy. People are quite friendly. And a lot of people do speak English out there, but aren't sometimes confident to like speak English. But um, if you just kind of probe a bit, it'll help you out. Um, uh, I travelled a bit. I went to a place called Guangzhou and Beijing, hence the picture of me on the Great Wall. Um, it was such. Luckily, we went on a really nice, sunny, warm day. There wasn't even much smog. <laughs> like a lot of people say, Beijing has a lot of smog, but there was none. It was just clear blue sky. And um, Guangzhou was really nice as well. Very authentic more like Chinese because Shenzhen is a really new built city so everything is really clean and quite kind of like a concrete jungle but there's really nice parts it's got loads of um, trees as well so you kind of get that balance between the new build and then the parks and the trees and, and whatnot just a bit about the company so I'll go back to it and um, we had free food as well so that was a bonus and the food was really good like I tried out loads of different things that I've never even seen before, but they tasted nice. And the um, company hosted us for a company event. Um, and yeah, like they just have like such a good atmosphere. Like they have so much fun as well. Um, uh, yeah, so basically my overall experience in China was good. Like we had um, lessons, Chinese lessons, which was planned by, well, organized by CRCC Asia. And they're really good for day to day. Um, or trying to catch a cab, ordering food, just a little conversation, the numbers, going to the market. Um, yeah, so at the moment, I've just got a job, a um, professional job, so that's really, really good. And loads of people are interested about um, why I went out to China, what I did in China. I think that always stands out. 
on my CV. I always get called, oh, what did you do in China? People kind of rush that part first. They don't even ask like about my degree, so it's just like, okay. <laughs> but yeah, it's um, yeah, it's a really, really good experience. I would encourage like loads of people if you get the chance to do it, just do it, go for it, because yeah, it's definitely something you want to do, especially now. Well, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much, uh, Sylvia. Um, sounds like you had a really great time. Um, so we're going to move over to Faith now. Um, as you can see, yeah. So just a brief introduction of, of Faith, and then she'll talk you through her program, and she will also be available for some question and answers at the end. Hi, everyone. Um, as you know, my name is Faith. I did the two-month internship um, in Shanghai. Um, I was working for an architectural company. Um, because that's the field that I'm interested in. I really like real estate and wanted to go into property. Um, the reason why I chose China, well, I, I st I'm currently a student at Nottingham University studying Spanish and Chinese, um, and as my third year, it was compulsory for me to spend um, a certain amount of time in China. So the first three months in China, I was actually studying at Qingdao University, which is a city in the north of China, and I wanted to apply to something different and I, I wanted to do an internship in the summer anyway and I thought I might as well do it while I'm here in, in China. Um, um, an email came through um, Advertising Generation UK with CRCC Asia and um, so I thought oh, I'll check this out see if they have um, what um, the type of internship that I like and um, I, I will say about a year ago I was roughly having a bit of a search on Google about um, people that offer internships in China and a lot of the other sort of competitors that I looked at didn't have the field that I wanted and um, so I was very surprised to see that CRCC offered architecture and real estate so that was a like a great thing for me and um, so I was quick off the mark and I applied so I applied through Generation UK um, the process was very simple. I just they just required a few documents and a sort of brief testimonial as to why you should be sort of offered um, an internship in China. Um, and then yeah, a few months uh, later, I got the email saying that I've got it, um, and I had a phone interview as well with CRCC, and um, just to sort of check what field I wanted to go into, how many months I'd like to do it, um, things like that. Um, uh, the location, I would say, I. Completely love Shanghai, mm -hmm. and and the fact that I lived in Qingdao, which was a different city, I really got to see the comparison between two relatively uh, very different but quite still developing cities. Um, I love the fact that you know the people were friendly and they're very welcoming. They're always very interested in foreigners, um, and I really like the other interns that I lived with. Um, you can see in the photo there that's the group of us that were living at Yan'an. Um, hotel. So we all got on very, very well. We um, would go out nights out and we sort of support each other. Like we'd always want to know what you know someone else is doing in their field. And um, I was also a couple of the other interns were doing an internship with CBRE, who are quite a big real estate company. So they sort of invited me to events that they had as well. So you know there was um, people were mixing, going to see other people's jobs and things like that. And um, other events that other companies were holding. So, you know, there was a lot of opportunity to sort of experience everything, not just in your own company. Um, with regards to what I'm doing now, I've just got back last Friday. <laughs> the jet lag is still kind of there. Um, the experience, I've, I've spent a total of five months in China um, with a, actually managed to travel towards the end of my. Um, trip so I went to Beijing um, which was great I, I, I liked the city it was really cultural um, and I obviously did the Great Wall and um, like Sylvia we managed to get a really nice bright day it was really really hot <laughs> so we had to drink a lot of water and it took a while um, and I also went to Xi'an which is another um, quite cultural city where they have the terracotta warriors so we visited that um, and then Shanghai, and then I did some traveling in South, in Asia as well. I went to Thailand, and I and also went to Singapore. So I got quite a wide experience of Asia. Um, and now that I'm back, I'm just waiting to begin my final year at Nottingham. Um, and in terms of like future plans, once I finish my degree, I still want to go into real estate. I want to go into property. 
um, particularly sort of commercial development and stuff. So I feel that the internship that I've done here in Sh well in Shanghai will be great for me when I do apply for future jobs. Um, just the fact that it was in a you know in a foreign country, particularly in Shanghai, where the property market is currently booming, um, and the fact that I've got <coughs> to understand a bit of the work ethic there. Um, how things like business is carried out there, like the overall experience is really has been really useful, and I think it will definitely help me. In the future. Perfect. Thank you very much, Faith. Um, so we'll we'll move it back over to uh, CRCC Asia now. But thank you very much, and Faith will be available at the end for all questions and answers. Okay, over to you. Okay, so CC Asia, um, how we were established um, and how our internship programs uh, grown after, uh, over the last uh, few years. Um, so just to give you a brief overview, um, CRCC Asia was founded by Daniel Niven and Edward Holroyd Pierce. They met on a master's course at SOAS University. Uh, they were both studying Chinese business and realized that um, it was imperative really that the UK needed to connect more with China. Um, obviously, China is a massive booming economy. Um, and there weren't that many established connections between the UK and China, so they set up a business which initially uh, tried to help uh, UK SMEs uh, break into the Chinese market. Um, eventually, uh, on the side, we started the internship program. We started sending young people to China, and this proved to be really popular. Um, so that sort of became the mainstay of the business, um, and that's uh, really what we focus on now. So just to give you a brief timeline, uh, was, CRCC Asia was established in 2006. In 2008, we started the China Internship Program. We sent about 250 interns to China in 2009, and we've expanded uh, pretty much doubled our numbers year on year since then. So we sent about 1,700 students and recent graduates to, or we expect to send about 1,700 uh, students and recent graduates to China this year. And we've sent about a thousand uh, this summer. Now we have uh, offices all over the world. So we have three offices in China, three offices in North America, three offices in Europe, in London, Madrid, uh, and Venice, and an office in Australia, in Sydney. Just a, a, a quick recap on what, what's included in the program. You can find all of this on our website in more detail. Um, but I'll just, I'll just talk through it briefly. So obviously we guarantee an internship in the sector of your choice. We have an English speaking supervisor in every company we work with, so Mandarin is not an essential requirement. Although if you do speak Mandarin or any other languages, we will try and match you with a company where you can utilize those language skills. We sort out your visa processing, um, which can be quite tricky if you're trying to do it individually. Um, and we give you pre-departure assistance. So we have a pre-departure drinks evening uh, for every group that goes out. And we also, you can also contact your regional office with any queries that you have. Um, and there'll always be someone on the other end to sort of aid you with that. Our teams in China will pick you up from the airport on arrival and take you to your accommodation. Uh, it's, a bit, it's international hotel accommodation. It's, it's an apart hotel. We say it's uh, about a four star um, standards and you can find some pictures of the accommodation that we use in each city on our website. We also provide an induction course and in cultural training. That's a full day. We give you uh, some broad information about China, the Chinese economy, Chinese culture, and also some specific information about the city you're in and how to make the most out of your internship. We have a formal welcome banquet as well, just so you can get to know other people um, who are on your program. And we give you a welcome pack which includes a SIM card and a city guide. We also have weekly Mandarin lessons, and these are at a beginner or an intermediate level, depending on your requirements. And we have 24-hour support and guidance on the ground from our teams in China. So if you ever have a problem, there'll always be a number that you can call, and there'll always be someone that can help you out. We also provide social events. So this can be anything ranging from dumpling making to calligraphy um, and stuff to sort of engage you um, with Chinese culture on the ground. And we have a business seminar for every group as well, where industry leaders will come in and, and speak to the groups about doing business in China, about whether it succeeded and also the challenges that they faced as well. And we include, include a volunteer charity day trip. We were with three different charities um, in our different cities, in Beijing, Shanghai, and Shenzhen. 
And that's a really valuable, it is, it is voluntary, but a lot of interns do it, and it's a really valuable experience. Um, a lot of interns sort of cite that as one of their best memories from their time in China. And we obviously have a lot of established contacts and companies in China, so we try and set up networking opportunities for all our interns on the ground. We provide you with a pack of business cards when you get out there um, and sort of get you to engage with business as much as possible in China. On your return, obviously, you gain access into our alumni network, which we'll talk a little bit more about later, um, and we'll give you a CRCC Asia certificate as well for your completion of the program. Just going to show you a quick video, introductory video now um, about our program. So this is airport pickup day where everyone will be arriving um, in Pudong Airport. We'll be introducing them to the program from here and we'll be collecting them off their flight as they arrive. Uh, this is obviously the start of their time in Shanghai so we want to be here to welcome them and to make them feel a bit at ease with all these people here surrounding them. want to figure everything out like the phone situation, the internet situation, how I'm supposed to wash my clothes because I don't know that yet. <laughs> and for the weekend I, I kind of want to just explore the city and I heard there's like a lot of nice clubs here and for my internship I'm really excited for that. Like I'm really excited to start working, see who I'm working with, what I'm going to be doing. I think that should be really good. Um, I'm expecting to meet a lot of new people and I'm also expecting to learn a lot just about the business field in China. Um, I've been to China before, but I've never really got to experience the business side of it. There's some of the etiquette and stuff. So we're at the banquet dinner with all the interns here. It's their first traditional Chinese meal. This is just the beginning. Next week, they'll all start their internship where they'll be able to learn a lot about Chinese business culture and also gain really valuable experience that they'll be able to take home, add to their CVs, and really just gain an invaluable experience. What's in it for me? Um, experience, like working in Shanghai. Uh, it's good for the CV. I've had interviews already and they've asked me about it and uh, they love it, so it's just how I'm doing it. An understanding of working in a, in a different culture in, in the East and China is the next superpower. Uh, more experience in the industry, uh, so it's going to be more well rounded and uh, through the skills to get a better job. Just ready to take it on and in, in Best in my future. Thank you, CRCC Asia. A little excited for my uh, first day of internship. Well, I'm looking forward to find out what I'm going to do today. Hopefully, it won't be something too stressful, but hopefully, something that will help me for my future career. Yeah, I'm really excited. This is my first internship, so it's quite an experience. Yeah. Uh, from my understanding, they do research on like companies in the NASDAQ and stock New York Stock Exchange and they like see how it affects the Chinese economy. Oh cool. It's it's definitely different than something I've ever experienced. Yeah. I guess. Like a nine or a ten. <laughs> Pretty excited. Yeah. Hi, I'm a little nervous. It's a big building. We just went up to the 14th floor and met with Gao Tang, who are in charge of stock markets and other financial information in the centre of Shanghai. I think our interns are very excited about starting work. Today we uh, came over to the migrant school with CRCC Asia. Uh, the children were full of energy. They taught us how to do the twinkle twinkle little star in Chinese and then we corresponded and sung it to them in English. Um, I come from a charity background so I really enjoyed getting to come and see charity work in China. I really like seeing how some of the kids come out of their shell. The more you give to them, the more they're willing to come out of their shell with you. Much. And that's taught me that in other situations as well, you don't necessarily have to speak the same language as someone, but with a smile, with a hand or a handshake or whatever, you can communicate. Even with a language barrier, we're all laughing and 
smiling and having a great time. And so I think this is my favorite day so far in Shanghai. And it just was a great experience that uh, I think I needed to experience while I was here in China, in Shanghai, and I'm loving it. And the kids are, are just amazing me day and day. So I'm loving my experience. Really enjoyed the program, learned a lot, and had a lot of great experiences meeting people from all over the world. Shanghai's been amazing. I was matched with a real estate company to handle their marketing and website management. Working in a great firm, Border and Limited. It's a consulting firm, so they help companies get started over here in Shanghai. My internship has also been amazing. I've gone to Shanghai World Financial Center, which is really great. I had a really great supervisor who uh, really taught me and like mentored me and showed me around town what was important to see. Everybody that I work with is also great. We go out to dinner and uh, my work has gone really well. I've been able to put my accounting and finance knowledge to use and learned a lot about international business while here. Uh, COCC did a good job helping me out. They picked us all up at the airport, introduced us to people, gave us an intro to Shanghai. Uh, whenever you got an issue, give a quick call and they do their best to resolve it. It's been a great experience. Really love COCC Asia. And I would recommend the program to anyone that's looking to gain international experience. It's been a good overall experience and I really like it. Okay, great. So um, this is just some information about the previous participants we've had on our program. Um, if you were able to watch that video just now, you will see um, there's quite a, quite a few American voices. So our main three regions are Europe, the Americas, and Asia Pacific. Asia Pacific sorry. So um, we have over 3,500 alumni, 3,757 to, to be exact. Um, and that obviously doesn't count the ones that have been on the program this summer. Um, and then within Europe, the Americas, and Asia Pacific, um, we were just sort of concentrating on, on our region from, from the London office. And there you can see the European nationalities that we have. So the Europe region is the biggest for CRCC Asia as it stands. Um, and we obviously have um, offices in London, Venice, and Madrid. And that's reflected um, on the, the pie chart on the right hand side. So obviously, the biggest um, is the British market, probably. Um, Firstly, because we have um, actually started in, in London. London is our, definitely still our head office. Um, but also, we also recently partnered with the British Council for Generation UK. So that, of course, has increased accessibility to the program um, in the UK market. So that's followed by Italian um, and then Spanish. And then, as you can see, Irish, French, German, Romanian, Russian, Polish, Norwegian, and Greek. We do have a really wide variety of people that go on our program. So that's one of the highlights. Um, uh, many of our alumni actually tell us is going to the program, meeting people from all around the world, um, and interacting with people that you know have that common ground against the culture, and you know really gain that international um, experience. So it's it's a great and it's a unique part of the program. So um, very much take advantage of that for future networking, etc. Okay, so we're moving on to um, clips of the website. We often get asked where uh, whereabouts you can find these things on the website, so we'll just talk you through it. Um, there are seven tabs along the top, um, and you'd need to go to the Media and Reviews tab to find the testimonials. There are over 150 short testimonials on our website um, from various program participants. As you can see, you can filter by sector, university, region, type of internship, or type of program. Um, it really depends on what you're looking for. So if you, you know, you're really interested in a finance internship in Shanghai, you can pretty much go onto those those filters and find somebody that's done that experience, and even potentially from your region. So it's really good with over 150. I'm sure you'll be able to find somebody that is is useful to you. Um, and if you ever want to get in contact with our alumni, we do have a certain number of alumni that are happy to be contacted. If you just get in contact with your local regional office, then they'll be able to put you in contact with the alumni. Um, and it's a great way of sort of learning about the program from an alumni's point of view. And then we've got the intern blog. So again, this is from an intern's perspective. This is not CRCC Asia talking about the program. This is very much from those that are on the ground. And um, we have an intern blogger in each of our cities every month. Um, obviously, we have a few more in the summer just because we have much larger numbers. But if you're interested in finding out what it's like in Beijing, Shanghai, Shenzhen, or Sanya, 
or if you're just interested in learning you know, what it might be like to do a finance internship from somebody that's writing a blog per week of their internship, it's a really good opportunity to find out more. So um, you'll just need to go to media and reviews as well and click on intern blogs and again you can filter it just like you did with the testimonials. And then finally we have alumni stories. So again it's under the media and reviews tab. Um, this is concentrating on alumni um, that have been particularly successful. I would say a majority of the people that go on our program end up doing great things, whether it be continue their studies, go on to do a master's program, or whether they end up getting uh, securing a job and, and sort of gaining a career that's linked to China. We have a number of features here on, on the website that will give you more information about what our alumni do afterwards. Um, we have a lot of alumni at Accenture, um, KPMG, Ernst & Young. Um, you'll see a few snippets um, coming up. It's really good to, to zone in on what people are doing, how they got there, and you know what part of the internship program really helped them secure that role. Because um, often it will be you know the fact that they had the international confidence to go out to China um, and gain that experience, and it you know it makes them quite unique in that in that way. But also sometimes companies are looking for specific. Um, elements of, of, of a skill. For example, they might be looking for somebody to help them open up an office in China or market their product to the Chinese market. You know, there's really lots of different examples of that. So, so check this out on the website. Um, so we've just picked a couple of case studies. This is the first um, of, a, of a testimonial. So it's a, from a guy called Fraser Bell. He did one month in Beijing um, and he worked at Oasis Healthcare. So he did a pharmaceuticals placement. Um, just some of the quotes that we pulled out, so China has taken me out of my comfort zone in nearly every aspect of my life, I, I'm sure Faith will agree with that. <laughs> it has been enlightening to see how a completely parallel culture lives. Um, my main area was in the pharmacy department where I was organizing stock, meeting patients, discussing treatment plans and giving medication to clients. You know, that's a huge role to be going into just for a one month internship, so that sounds really exciting. Um, I had the chance to make some amazing friends from all corners of the globe, all coming to China to learn and travel. Yeah, as I said, you know, you've got something in common with these people before you've even met them, so that's a really exciting way of looking at things. And it often means that people stay friends for a lot longer than you know just after the program. They they, they really build bonds. Um, and then all in all, CRCC Asia have created a great opportunity to learn and travel through China and become immersed in its culture. And the, this experience has unquestionably given me a, a different perspective on China society and the people that make up this country. I will definitely be back to China in the future. Now that obviously is exactly what we want to hear. You know, we really encourage people that, to experience China in the hope that you know, they either bring the, the knowledge and skills that they gained back to, the, to their home country or you know, they, they love the opportunity of staying out in China or going back out in the future or, or having a career that connects connects them with China in some way, so that's really exciting. And a couple of alumni success stories, so as I said before, we, we do have a couple in, um, in Google and Accenture. So we've got one case study here, David O'Mahony, he went on the program in 2011, um, he did two months in marketing, PR and advertising, and he said, I'm now an account manager with Google, helping small and medium sized businesses grow using AdWords, YouTube and display advertising. The internship opened my eyes to the opportunities that are available working abroad and made me realize I would love to work for a multinational corporation like Google. So that's really exciting. I mean, David, David O'Mahony keeps in contact with us quite a lot and he often recruits um, interns and previous people that have been on our programs actually into Google now. So, you know, if you're interested, make sure that you check out the connections that we have um, and keep in contact with other alumni because you never know where it, where it can be quite handy. And then finally we have Sophie Corkat, she's now working for Accenture in London. She says, on my return from China I was quickly accepted onto a graduate scheme as an analyst at management consultants, etc. Coming back from China you've got this one thing on your CV that makes you stand out, it shows you've got some get up and go. And she did a two month internship in finance and accounting. Okay, so um, just a few photos of the events that we organize for alumni. So we're very keen to keep in contact with our alumni just to find out what they're doing um, after they return home from China, but also to help them out in any way we can. If they want to go back out to China, you know, we can help you with visas, our connections. Um, but we also organize alumni events in, in London, in Venice, in Madrid, um, and also in America and, and also in Asia Pacific as well. So specifically London, we have a annual alumni dinner. We've got our next one coming up on Friday the 12th of September. Um, so anybody that's you know coming back from China now, you, you'd be able to attend that. 
Um, we often have networking events as well where we um, invite local businesses. We've, we've had Ernst & Young and, and Accenture join one of those before in the past. You know, I think they realize that they've probably accepted quite a few people that have been on our programs in the past into graduate schemes. Um, and there's something that, you know, they obviously like about these people and whether it be their, their personalities or their education, you know, it probably does have some reflection on their internship as well. So I think it's a great opportunity for um, alumni to get together and meet each other, but also to network and, and take advantage of the possibilities that there might be where they come back to their home country. Okay, so I'll pass you back over to Ed to finally talk about the uh, alumni engagement. Okay, yeah, so just building on uh, how we sort of stay in touch with our alumni. Um, we have an alumni entrepreneurship fund. Um, so we offer this to um, our alumni that are interested in setting up their own China-related business. Um, our directors um, set aside investment up to £10,000 um, that they'll invest into any alumni that has, has an idea for, for a China-related business. And we've had a few successful um, companies in the past that, that have been invested in, um, most notably the Dragon Trip, um, who offer backpacking tours around China and are our sister company. We obviously have the alumni Facebook page and the alumni LinkedIn group, and this is a really useful way to stay in touch with people that were on your program, and also just keep up to date with news that's going on in China, check out job opportunities um, and things like that, and, and alumni events that we'll put on as well. So I think we have over a thousand al alumni members um, as part of our Facebook page, and the LinkedIn group I think slightly less, but around 900. And we also um, love to stay in touch with our, our alumni and love to recruit our alumni as well. So we currently have seven alumni now working in full-time positions across our global offices. And especially during the summer, we will recruit alumni for temporary roles, and we'll promote these through various channels, but definitely through the alumni Facebook page and the LinkedIn group. So again, that's a really good incentive to, to join the groups and just uh, stay in touch with what's going on. Okay, and if you want to uh, reach out to us or want to find out more information, there's a number of mediums you can do this on. Um, obviously, the website's the first port of call. There's a lot of information there about our programs. Laura's talked you through the intern blogs, the testimonials, the alumni stories. Uh, we also have a Facebook page that you can uh, we post on very regularly about recent China news and Twitter as well. You can check us out on Google+, Instagram, YouTube, Weibo, and Youku as well, and Pinterest. And if you want to um, get in touch with your regional office to find out more information, uh, here, here, are, here are a list of them. So obviously we have an office in London. We have three offices in North America, uh, an office in Venice, one in Madrid, one in Sydney, and uh, a new office in Toronto that opened a couple of weeks ago. So stay in tuned over the next four months for the following topics and discussions. Um, this is the second part of our webinar series. Uh, the next topic will be how an internship abroad can help your career, and that's on September the 17th. Then on October the 15th, uh, the topic will be what kind of companies does CRCC Asia work with? November the 12th, life, life in China as a foreigner. And December the 17th, our final instalment will be top 10 tips for networking in China. So thank you for joining our second webinar. Um, so now we're going to uh, just set up the question and answer session. So it will be myself, Laura, um, and Faith. So just bear with us one second. Okay. okay. Perfect. So um, we just need to set up the Q and A. Um, you can see us all here. Okay. Perfect. So um, yeah, I can see a couple of questions already. Let's just get that up. So we've got from Mark Dawson. Um, bear with me a second. Will I get help paying for the internship program? So um, I'll, I'll answer that, Mark. Um, so basically, there are two different um, versions of our program. We have the paid for program, the China internship program, which is what Sylvia took part on earlier in the presentation. Um, and then we have Generation UK. So Generation UK is a campaign um, created by the British Council. Um, it basically covers internships programs in China in addition to study abroad programs in China. 
Um, they basically saw that they that it wasn't accessible to everybody in the country, and they wanted to make sure that it was. So there are a few criteria that you have to meet to be able to be part of Generation UK. Um, some of which you need to be on a T1 or above. Um, you need to be in receipt of a maintenance grant from the student loans company. Um, you need to be enrolled in university or a graduate within the last year. Um, and you know, there's a number of different things that they take into consideration. But if you were to be accepted onto Generation UK, then yes, the program will be fully funded. Um, you just need to pay for the flights, and and that's what um, Faith was part of. So you know, it really does happen as long as you get your application in early enough. We had 162 people on the Generation UK program specifically um, over the last year. So if you're interested, make sure you you get your application in as soon as possible. Okay. So the next one, do you want to take that one first? Yeah, um, so James has said, uh, one of your alumni said she applied to, through the British Council. I can't see it on their website. Do you know if that application is still running? Um, so as Laura said, we have sent about 160 people out on the Generation UK program already. Um, applications are going to uh, be up and running again in September uh, because this portion of funding has been allocated. But if you just keep checking back onto our website, we will announce it when, when the funding comes through. But it, it has been confirmed for September. OK, great. So do you want to tell us a little bit more um, about your actual internship today? Um, yeah, so I was working for a company called Chapman Taylor. Um, they are an architectural company. They'd only actually been open their Shanghai office um, two years ago. So they're relatively quite new. There were Chinese, um, I had Chinese co workers, there were people from Spain, Portugal, Germany, all over. Um, so it was a really sort of international feel. You almost didn't even feel like you were in China. Um, and I had a really good director who I worked alongside with. Um, he was very sort of helpful in, um, because I've never done anything architectural based. Sure. So there was a lot of sort of terminology and stuff like that that um, I wasn't too sure on. So he was always very patient with me. Um, we had regular meetings um, to discuss my progress, but also the progress of the projects that he assigned to me during my internship. Um, and just as a company, it was really good. I was able to go to sort of conferences and events and network and meet people, key people in the industry within China. Um, and I managed to make quite a few contacts um, that you know I'm, I'm now sort of engage with them on LinkedIn and things like that. So right. sure. if I ever want to go back, yeah. Sure. In the future. Okay, great. So um, a couple more questions down the side. Um, one from Annabelle Rackman. Uh, let's have a look. So do you need a university degree to take university degree, sorry, to take part in an internship? Uh, yes, you do, um, specifically for the CRCC Asia program. Um, we do accept those that are in their first year, so we do accept 18 plus. Um, but you do need to either be enrolled in a university degree or you need to have already obtained a degree. Um, it's a requirement of all of the companies that we work with in China. Um, and also, you know, we, we really feel as though the level of student that we're taking on and putting out in China would need to be on sort of a T1 or above. So, yes, they really do need to hold the degree. Okay. Um, and then we've got another one here from uh, Anushka Malau. Okay. So how long do we get the visa for if I want to travel after my program? So yeah, um, you basically get a visa for the duration of your program. If you're going on the Dragon Trip, which is an organized travel program and it's part of um, our program, then you're able to get a visa for the duration of the internship and the travel program. If you want to do your own travel afterwards, it can be a little bit more difficult now. Um, the visa regulations are changing all the time. Um, and at the moment, you can definitely apply for a longer term visa, but we can't always guarantee that you'll get it. It's not our decision. Obviously, it's down to the discretion of the embassy. Um, and they make different decisions for different cases. So sometimes it will be fine and sometimes it won't be. So I would suggest that you apply for the visa through CRCC Asia first. Make sure that you put the duration of the days that you would need um, in addition, obviously, with the travel as well. Um, and then we go and apply for your visa. If everything's fine, then you can go ahead and make your travel arrangements. Otherwise, I would always hold off because it's not guaranteed. Um, and as anybody that has dealt with China knows, the visa regulations do change on a regular basis. So you do need to be a bit wary of that. But 
your local CRCC Asia office will be able to guide you on, on how you're more likely to get that visa or if you need um, a, a certain duration and what your options are. Okay, so um, we can go with Annabelle Reckman again. Uh, do CRCC Asia offer any scholarships? Um, do you want to answer that? Yeah, um, so we do offer an inter internal scholarship program, um, and this normally runs uh, for the Europe region in October. Um, again, um, it, when this is confirmed, we'll promote it on social media and on our website. Um, so keep checking back and keep uh, looking looking out for it. Um, but it should run through October um, this year. And um, I guess I've got a question for you, Faith. Um, what would you say was the biggest cultural difference? I know that you'd already experienced China before, yeah. um, but maybe even talking about your first experience in Qingdao or when you went to Shanghai, what would you say that was the most prevalent um, difference? I think the most obvious difference was the amount of people there were. You know, I was completely sort of taken aback when I sort of the commute to work. There was always so many people on the tube. Um, and I remember at first being British, I was like, you know, letting people on in front of me. And then it got to the point that I was late for work and I was like, no, I can't do that anymore. I have to sort of, you know, join them. So it sometimes feels like a mad rush, but sort of once you accept um, the fact that, it, that this is the, their way of life and you sort of get on with it, it just sort of becomes the norm. Um, and then obviously there was the food, but for me, I love Chinese food, so that was great for me. Um, Did you find it quite different to what you were used to before you went oh, to yeah. China? Oh yeah, yeah, it's much actually much more authentic and nice. I prefer the, the real Chinese food as opposed to the ones that I've been eating in, in England. Sure. Um, yeah, it was, and it was so cheap. Everything yeah. was absolutely like I used in Qingdao. I'd have a meal for like fifty p. Um, something that you pay like a tenner for in London. Um, <laughs> so yeah, like I manage. I think for anybody who's worrying about sort of expenses when you're out there, it's actually um, a lot cheaper in China. Um, sort of getting there is the expensive part, but actual general living costs is very low. And once everything is paid for, you will only need to really sort of buy your food and sort of going out and stuff. Um, I can say for being in Shanghai, I don't think I spent a single penny on drinks or entering a club ever. Um, Partly because you're a girl. <laughs> yeah, but it's also like Westerners get a lot of um, benefits. Um, and if you sort of know like a promoter or whatever, you sort of get in and stuff. But um, I would say sometimes just go knowing, sort of have a budget um, and know the exchange rate, know how much renminbi is to pounds so you can sort of tell if something's too high or something's um, too good to be true. But other than that, it's great to do. And um, how did you find Shanghai as a city generally? I completely loved it. I sort of I'd lived in Qingdao for three months. I got to the end of my tether. I was like, I really don't like China. But then the minute I set a foot in Shanghai, um, from meeting Grace Wong at the airport, <laughs> sort of seeing the city as I walked, as we drove into um, our hotel, I was like, oh my gosh, I could definitely live here. And then on the first day of work, my colleagues took me out to like one of the local restaurants, um, and it was just it was. Amazing, it was really like really cosmopolitan for people that like that kind of thing. Um, it was like great. I love the city, really accessible. Okay, and um, we've got another one here from James Phillips. Is the scholarship means tested like the Generation UK program or on merit? Um, okay, do you want to answer that? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, it does. It will be means tested. It does take into account and um, things like um, your family income, and it also you know. Uh, we, we want academic excellence as well, um, so we'd normally only take people for the scholarship program if they're um, predicted on for a two one at minimum. But we want really rounded people as well. Um, it don't, you don't have to have been to China before. Um, you don't have to have travelled extensively before. But we want to know, obviously, when you're applying for that program, it's, it, there's a lot of people that you're going to be up against. Um, and we want to know exactly um, why it should be you that, that deserves the chance to um, get a funded program through us internally. Um, so yeah, we'd ask you to focus on exactly why you want to specifically go to China and take part in an internship, um, and also obviously uh, research your sector in China. Um, so for example, if you're interested in finance, um, you know, 
tell us exactly why you want to go to China to do an internship in finance um, and have an idea of which city you want to go to as well and things like that. Um, but yeah, no, so in, in answer to your question, the scholarship program is really sexy. Yeah, it's a little bit different to Generation UK in the way that Generation UK is quite strict. It's only available to those that hold a British passport um, and you do need to be in receipt of a maintenance grant. Um, whereas for our scholarship program, it's open to everybody from that region, um, no matter which passport they hold. Um, and also, it's very much based on sort of references and a reference saying that, you know, you could not otherwise afford this. You, do, you don't actually have to be in receipt of a maintenance grant. So um, it's a little bit broader and it's a little bit less strict. But yes, it is still meant to go to those people that couldn't afford to do the program otherwise. Okay, um, we've got one from Mark Dawson here. Um, he says, I am an older student, will this matter to the business that I will be working for on the program? Um, not at all. Uh, we have students and graduates and young professionals from you know, all, all different age ranges. Um, I'd say, honestly, the, the summer months are definitely focused more towards students and graduates. Um, so you're looking sort of June, July, August, and then December and January, which is the Asia Pacific summer. Um, and they are very much more focused on the younger audience, but we really have people from all different age, age ranges. I think, you know, we haven't had anyone over the age of about 55, but we do go right up to that. So it's really open to lots of different people, as long as you appreciate that potentially a majority of the people that are on the program may be of the age range between sort of 21 to 26, 27. Um, each business that we work with requires something different. Um, obviously, they're all individual companies. We work with over 400 of them. So some people will be looking for somebody slightly older. Some people will be looking for somebody that could potentially stay on after the internship. Um, so that definitely won't work against you in any way. Um, I think probably just in terms of the everyday living, um, just to appreciate that you might be living with people that are younger than you, You know, the cultural events, the social events, maybe um, with groups that are young. Younger, but that's the only thing and we're, we're totally open to lots of different people and we think that this opportunity can be beneficial to people with lots of different age ranges as well. Okay, and then we have one now from Anushka and Malau again. Um, so. so she's she's saying, do companies often place CRCC in terms of further job opportunities? I think maybe you're asking if um, there's a job available at the end of the internship. Um, no, I mean, we'd never say that a job is guaranteed at the end of the internship, but if you go and have a look at our alumni stories um, and testimonials on our website, there are um, people that have been on our program that have in the past um, come back and stay in contact with their employers in China um, and, you know, further down the line, uh, potentially been offered a job and gone back out to China. So that, that has happened. Um, we usually say... Um, you know, uh, the majority of interns within three months of um, returning from the program uh, will have a graduate level job. I think it's uh, figures around 89% last time we took a survey. Um, so it is really obviously good for your employability, whether that's in China or the UK, um, but we'd never say a job is guaranteed from this program. Yeah, just add to that question. Yeah, and once you're out there, you can sort of network and meet people within the company and other companies as well. And I think it's all about sort of your attitude and how much you really want to secure a job. If it's a job in China you're looking for, because um, one of the interns that I was um, on the program with, he's currently still out there now. So he's studying, doing further studies, and he's managed to get some contacts in which now he's sort of interning for a different company. So that was all of his own back through the CRC Asia um, internship, so it's sort of once you're out there, there's so many opportunities, you just have to sort of have to grasp them um, and see where it takes you from there. Yeah, totally true. Good point. Okay, um, and we have one from Keith Brady here. Um, so in which district is the Shanghai apartment? So all of our um, apartments are centrally located. Um, it, they're always sort of in the business district or just outside of the business district. There are a couple of accommodations that we use in Shanghai because our numbers are so large. So 
I would suggest that you contact your regional manager. Um, I think that you're probably from our region, in which case it would be Kathy Watts, and she'll be able to tell you exactly the accommodation that you'll be in um, and which district it's in. Um, we only use two in Shanghai, um, both of which are fairly close to each other, but they're not right next to each other. Um, we make sure that all of the the program that you're on, the people that from that program are all in the same accommodation, so that you'll be with the people that you um, would be going out with. Um, but also, you know, we feel that the numbers are quite large, you will be all together, but equally it's sometimes nice to sort of interact with those that are staying elsewhere as well. Um, the cultural event, the social events, and the networking events will all be together, um, unless it's in the summer months where the, the groups really are quite large and they have to split them up. But you know, you'll be very, you'll be able to interact with people that are in your accommodation and the other accommodation. Um, it's an apart hotel, so you have um, a shared living area and kitchenette, and then you'll be going off into separate bedrooms. Um, and then, of course, you have access to a gym and in at least one of the accommodations in Shanghai, you have access to a swimming pool. Um, but maybe Faith can talk a little bit more about the accommodation that you were in. Yeah. Um, so I was staying at the Yan'an um, Hotel, and it was so like very accessible to get to the to the city centre. Um, the sort of metro station was only like a ten minute walk away. Um, and like um, like has been said, I was living with another intern. Who I've gone on very well with. I was very like pleasantly surprised with the hotel. It was really nice. Um, you had like every three days your sheets were changed. Everything was kept clean. If you had any problems, you just called down to reception and they sort of came up and sorted it out like straight away. The concierge was really really nice. Like he always sort of greeted us when we came in. Um, so you get the full service of the hotel, which was a a pleasant um, change from being in university halls in Qingdao for three months. Um, so yeah, and you know, being with all the other interns, you're all on different floors, but pretty much the same room number. So you know, you can go down and say hi to your mates or whatever. And usually in the morning, you're all going out at the same time, so you can walk to the tube station together. Um, so yeah, it was really good. Oh, and the swimming pool is amazing. <laughs> it's um, the the sort of the hotel swimming pool. You have access to that. Um, so I just sort of swam every now and then in the gym as well. So you pretty much get the whole package, something which I wasn't um, expecting. And it was just, it was great. I really liked it. Great. And, and equally, if you're interested in Beijing and Shenzhen, they, they act in a very similar way as well. Okay, so I think that's all the questions and answers uh, session we have for now. I just want to finish off with sort of asking Faith, I guess, what's the biggest thing that you're going to miss about China? Bearing in mind, she did only get back a week ago. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to miss, I already missed my company. Okay. Um, I'm still in contact with them on WeChat, so we send messages to each other. But I think all the interns that I met, like I made so many friends, um, so many connections in Australia, New Zealand, um, America, and Spain, like there were so many people there and we all got on so well. Um, so I'm going to miss sort of being able to just knock on their door and be like, how's your internship going? Is everything okay? Um, and sort of going into the city and just being in Asia, um, especially when you go to the Bun, well, I'm talking about Shanghai here, but when you go to the Bun, which is my sort of Central Street in Shanghai, and just sort of looking over the river and seeing the financial district, which is Pudong, and you just like it's almost breathtaking. You're in this completely new city, experiencing all these new things, and sometimes just like that's what I'm going to miss, just being in a completely different country. Okay, great. Well, that's it from us. Thank you very much for coming, Faith. Thank we appreciate it. Me. And to Sylvia, unfortunately, she, she's not here for the Q and A, but thank you very much to her. Um, and that's the last in, uh, sorry, that's the second in our webinar series, and the next one will be um, in September. So thank you very much for tuning in.